beautiful friends, it's me Stormy and we're going to talk about more happenings of 2020. This time I'd like to talk to you and walk you through what's happening as these transiting nodes get ready to leave this balance that we've been experiencing between Cancer and Capricorn and in 2020, in fact June 4th 2020, all the way until January of 2022, we are going to see the nodes working their way through the energies of Gemini and Sagittarius. So the north node will move into the energy of Gemini and that south node is going to move into the energy of Sagittarius. So this transition of these nodes. Now I first of all want to share with you my personal experience of the nodes. In astrology, we never say in absolutes, right? So absolutes or nevers. We don't use that kind of language. So if you're working with somebody who's using that kind of language, be very mindful of that. But that's typically not the style that we work in. And when we talk about aspects and transits that are happening, we explore the way these things could be playing out. Now, my personal experience with my chart and the chart of my clients is wherever the transiting nodes go, instead of it being like this could happen this way it typically tends to be the area that we absolutely do make some progress or some development in it's absolutely phenomenal that's why i have a lot of love for working with the node energies in the chart and in transit because they're just such beautiful maps they tell us what we're going to grow into and what we're going to grow out of now if you need a little bit more practice at actually understanding the nodes in general i've got a whole node video and I will link it in the description box down below. As far as these particular transiting energies, what's happening is that a big wholesale, global, worldly, connected kind of level, we are going to start to move our energies. We're going to start to grow into the Gemini energies. And at the south node level, what we're doing is we're detaching, right? We're trying to let go. We're allowing something to fall off because it's no longer valid to help us achieve the journey that we need to in the north node energy. So with these energies residing in the energies of um, both Gemini and Sagittarius, what's going to happen is it gives us the ideas of what Gemini represents. New thinking, new learning, new ideas, new levels of communication, new levels of connection. Of to course, the Gemini of energies being the natural ruler of the third house, whether or not that's where it's falling for you in its transit, is also this energy of early learning, so early education, right? Now, when we look to the other side of what's happening where are we detaching we're growing into new learning new communication new ideas new thinking new communication but on the other side what are we doing in that Sagittarian energy well we're needing to unlearn some of the beliefs that we've had we are having to unlearn some ethical standards that we thought were really great in the world and now we find that they don't fit anymore um, we really kind of have to unlearn some things we've thought about the law about government we've just spent a lot of time relooking at government with the transiting node and continuing Saturn work right so as we are learning to detach one of the things I would love for you to be mindful of as we're moving through this time frame in 2020 when we get to May we're going to start to see this Gemini Sagittarian axis laid up. So what's the new thinking? What's the new communication? What's the new absorption of information that you need to take on? And it's not easy when we're growing towards that north node, right? There's some work. It's kind of uncomfortable. We're very comfortable in our old way of thinking, the Sagittarian energy. We're comfortable in distractions. We're comfortable in just being like, it's fine and being very optimistic saying, oh, it's fine if it's this way. But that is not the focus of where we're going. We're going to have to learn new systems, new peoples, new ideas, and new practices that will take us forward, especially as we move towards this great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter together in the energy of Aquarius, which demands new information, innovative ideas to govern our societies, our lives, and our minds. So as we move into this Gemini-Sagittarian axis, I would encourage you to 
encourage curiosity of yourselves, encourage questioning and willingness to unthink and unlearn and question your own beliefs. Why do you believe that? Why are you that political party? Why is that your message, right? Like, why are you doing, saying, and believing what you are doing? Is it because you have an old idea that has made you believe it has to be that way? Because maybe it had to be that way, but it's outdated now and we're going to start to rethink all sorts of things. It's going to be an absolutely interesting time, I think, to see these energies play out in our societies, but in our own lives as well. Now, I wanna tell you a couple things. My personal experience with watching these nodes play out is we just ended the Cancer Capricorn axes as we get to the May timeframe. This particular set of um, nodal movements was happening for me rolling through my 12th house and then my 11th house and then it was also a nodal return for me so one of the things that did happen absolutely as i spent the time with that node traveling through that cancerian energy having to nurture and love myself through the fears that I had and let them transition out of my life so that I could move forward and grow into that node and welcome the new friends that I had met along the journey that allowed me and taught me how to nurture myself through some of those fears that I was definitely, they had been there for a very long time and didn't belong anymore. That north node helped me to clean out that 12th house, make space in the 11th house. Now on the other side of that particular set of energy was of course that transiting south node. So that Capricorn energy that I was asked to detach from in my day-to-day -day thinking, my wellness, my sixth house said, this thinking doesn't work anymore. You don't have to feel guilty of that. You don't have to feel shameful of that. All of these things were things I started to detach from in my own wellness. I also, as you guys saw, lost 73 pounds in this last year, right? So it is a big detaching, which leads to the growth on the other side. And now my world looks completely different. So as you consider that example in your life, first of all, think about it. What's happened on the Cancer Capricorn axis for you? What have you learned? What have you you shed. Now as we move into this Gemini axis, where are you ready to learn to recommunicate, to rethink, to reabsorb information, and what are you willing to question and get ready to let go of? Now, other things I want to bring to your consideration, because the North Node moves into the energy of Gemini, it means that we are going to start to see a lot of rulership and a lot of profound um, interactions with Mercury, which is the ruling energy of Gemini, the ruling planet. Now, Mercury as a planet, as you know, is very, very busy every year. He retrogrades just every five minutes. Really, it's just a few times a year. And this year, he's going to continue his retrograding per usual through water signs. So this is a path where I will tell you truly at an emotional level. And then we're going to have a Venus retrograde happening in this Gemini energy as well. So really truly at an emotional level, at a communication level, at a mental level, where are you needing to make some decisions around your money? Where are you needing to make some decisions and have some conversations around affection in your life or a lack of affection? What new perspectives is this particular nodal shift going to bring to your attention about what it is that you need from an emotional level to have in your life? Do you need to be more free? Do you need to have more space to express yourself? Um, do you need to tell that person in your life, I don't believe I have to be with you anymore. I was afraid before, right? What are the things that you're unthinking and there has been so much in society you guys about our family lines our history the beliefs of our history and our ancestors that don't need to come forward what does that look like for you in your life are you breaking out to a new freedom in that particular energy now the south node being in Sagittarius is obviously ruled by this Jupiter energy and Jupiter is in Capricorn at this time. So with Jupiter being here in Capricorn, he's showing us the wisdom of a new way, of a new perspective. So it literally becomes this helper to this south node energy that's saying detach, let go from that. That doesn't work anymore. You don't need that anymore. That used to be true, but it's not anymore. Jupiter shows us that the only way to expand is to actually 
actually let go of what's happening over here, what you used to believe. And remember, a theme that I talk about in the 2020 um, horoscopes is that if it is broken or needs to be fixed, this is something that you're going to need to do or let it go. And I talk about that in the Jupiter video as well, so make sure you've checked it out so you're kind of in the know as to what's going on and going down in 2020, okay? So I really look forward to seeing how this axis lights up for you. Please leave me in the comment section down below what houses is this going to affect for you because we can all expect to absolutely do some growth and do some detachment in these areas and we'll be left with new ideas. And if you think about this truly, truly on a societal level, societies globally are changing, whether it be financially from that Uranus and Taurus energy that's coming up. In the United States, we've got impeachment on the table at this particular point, plus we're moving into a 2020 election and whatever is happening in one company, company country really does affect another. So at a global level, if we're having to get new ideas about how society and money work, and detaching from things that we don't believe did anymore, if we're having to welcome in new ideas, wouldn't this energy be perfect to help us be able to make that transition to the more Aquarian status of living that we're actually moving towards in this age of Aquarius? So I think it's an interesting time and to track the pattern of where we are now, where we've been and where we're going, moving towards that Aquarian age, we can really see why the depth and the need of the nodes will help us happen, help us get there as we happen along. Now, a couple things I want to point out before before I end this video, I know I've been talking a little bit. If you are around the ages of 18, 37, 55, 74, somewhere in there, and you have your um, node in Gemini, you're going to be having um, what's called a nodal return. And that means that the transiting north node is going to come conjunct with your um, natal node that will also be in Gemini. And when this happens, it is like clarity comes to your table. And it doesn't happen overnight, but things slowly become very, very clear. You feel like you have a path. You feel like you have a calling. You feel like you are awakened in some way or stirred in some way. And you start moving towards something that may be very, very different than what you were moving towards before, but ultimately it brings a life-changing event into your life because of this stirring, okay? Now, our nodal actions start to happen from the time that we're little tiny. So if you've got tiny people in your life, then you can also start to watch them at, let's, let's starting at the age of four. Four, 13, 23, uh, 41, 51, 60, 69, somewhere in there, you're going to be having nodal squares. So what that means is that the transiting north node is square your natal north node. And when there is a square, I don't care if it's a square of any of the outer planets or the points, which nodes are points, what happens is, is you're going, wait a minute, something's not working. You've been put under pressure and you feel like you're off track with your life calling or moving towards those nodal lessons, right? It's like you're being given, you're being shown, you're being put under enough pressure that you're like, something's got to change. Something's got to give. I've got to let something go. There's intense frustration that comes with the energy because a square is meant to make you move. It's meant to make you make some decisions, right? I know that, oh my goodness, as I was experiencing Experiencing some nodal square in my 30s, things that were happening is that I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know why I'm such a victim, right? I started to be shown in so many ways how I am not a victim in any way, shape, or form, and I really had to step up. I had to get a hold of my daily routines so that I could fulfill what needed to happen. The other things that started to happen for me at that time is I started a business, and I had no idea what I was doing, and I was going, I don't know how to do this. People are going to think I'm an imposter. I'm a fraud. I don't know, but something has got to change, and what had to change is I had to keep doing the work in the day-to-day -day living. I had to keep learning. I had to keep studying, but most of importantly, I had to start actually seeing clients. So it was a very big, frustrating time for me. So I hope it came out well on camera because girl was stressed, okay? Now, if you are uh, in the ages of 9, 27, 46, 65, and about 
if you're in your 80s, 83, if that's you, you're going to be having what's called an inverse nodal return. So that means the transiting north node is going to be on top of your natal south node, and of course, vice versa for your south nodes. So when you're in an inverse return, you kind of have the best view ever. You're looking around at your past, your present, what you want in your future. It's like the landscape is beaming and you're starting to gain confidence at things you now know how to do. And think about the natural progress of that. You're nine and things are going on and you're not quite sure what you're doing out here on this planet, right? But it's a little bit of a check-in point because you definitely know you're not eight anymore because you're not going to get away with some things, right? And then you take that nine and you move it to 27 and you are so much more confident in the day-to-day -day things. Your internal confidence is you're aware that there are consequences for things in life. You are aware that um, if you continue to live in the actions and attitudes of just your south node, it's not going to actually help you grow and feel fulfilled. So so these are wonderful inverse times that show you a little wake up call that maybe what you're doing is not exactly on course, but you still have plenty of room to correct. Okay. So if you're having any one of those events or you want to know more about those events, I'm happy to sit down, look through your chart. We can peel through and see what's coming up and going on for you. But ultimately, what I would love for you to take away from this information today, whether you're having a nodal return or anything like that, is that these transiting nodes are going to move here in 2020. And it is important and it is a big deal for us. It is literally the universe's way of helping to take an entire species forward in helping them to actually achieve what needs to happen um, in order to continue to grow and to continue to progress and then continue to stay on track ultimately. So from a global level to a personal level, we're going to see a lot of new ideas. We're going to see a lot of thinking. We're going to see a lot of communication of new ideas and absorption of new ideas in our world and in our own personal lives here in 2020. All right, you guys, like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I look forward to talking to you about your nodes, seeing what you've got in the comment section down below, and seeing how it all plays out for all of us, okay? I love you guys. Bye.